all right guys welcome back to the traditional channel i'm sure many of you've been waiting for this so let's get on to lecture number nine on Tuskegee and the american founding with this lecture we enter the most revolutionary period of the most revolutionary century when philosophical ideas had a major impact on the founding of new republics in america and the france the french philosopher montesquieu notion of the separation of powers was crucial for the American founders, who were in brilliant conflict with one another. Jefferson declared independence based on natural law and natural rights and supported active, decentralized self-government. Hamilton argued against Jefferson for an economically active, centralized state. Madison expanded Montesquieu's separation of powers with federalism, the complexities of the American Constitution and system of government are a consequence of these disagreements. Montesquieu, the French philosopher Montesquieu from 1689 to 1755, published The Spirit of the Laws in 1748, presenting a largely dispassionate analysis of the type of government laws of nature played no significant role. He analyzed forms of government as to their propriety for climate, population, culture, and so on. Two claims he made were crucial to the revolutionaries of 1776. First, Montesquieu divided government into three types, each of which operates through a characteristic principle. Republics, which can, ta which can take aristocratic or democratic forms, monarchy, and despotism. The two types of republics, aristocratic and democratic, along with monarchies, correspond to Aristotle's three kinds of virtues, virtuous government, and despotism signifies his vicious types of government. The principle by which despotism rules is fear. The principle required for monarchy is honor. Republics, however, need virtue. In the case of aristocratic republics, ruled by an election, from among a noble class, moderation is the key virtue. For democratic republics, in which all share in rule and one learns to obey and command equals, a public-spirited love of the republic must be inculcated through education. Second, Montesquieu admired England as the most politically free and advanced nation in Europe. He particularly emphasized a structural feature of the English constitutional system, mixed government with a separation of powers. Montesquieu advocated the separation of executive, judicial, and legis legis uh, legislative powers and a bicameral legislator. He suggested that the executive should be able to veto legislation but not establish it and the legis legislature should reduce its executive power but not disarm it. The result is four agencies, the executive, the judiciary, House of Lords and House of Commons, all acting as checks on one another. Montesquieu was the most famous promoter of the notion that the liberty of the citizens requires a government with internal political limits whose parts are in, competi in competition. He also suggested that in republics, size corrupts, meaning that they must not be too large unless they are take, take the form of a federal republic, meaning a federation of small republics which curbs the drawbacks of size. Ferment in North America In the lead-up to the American Revolution, wars between Europeans for control of North America produced ferment. The English claimed the east coast to the Appalachian Mountains, the French a huge area from the northeast Canada through the Great Lakes down to the Louisiana and Spain and, and the Spanish Florida. The Seven Years' War broke out in 1754 between the French and the English. After its conclusion in 1763, the English Parliament began imposing direct taxes on the colonies. Of course, these lead to the Boston Tea Party, the formation of local ruling committees of correspondence, and eventually the First Continental Congress. Fighting between the British and the colonists began in 1775 culminated in the expulsion of British forces and the Declaration of American Independence on July 4, 1776. The Continental Congress met on and off from 1774 to 1789. It first produced the Articles of Confederation, stipulating a loose confederation of the 13 states. It then proposed a new federal constitution in 1787, which was ratified in 1789. 
It was a fight over ratification that, stack, that stack, stacked out the division among our founders. Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson from 1743 to 1826 wrote several significant works, including his summary view of the rights of British America, 1774, but of course he is most well known for the Declaration of Independence. The preamble is perhaps the most famous political writing of the modern age and clearly invokes natural rights. The Declaration is a law key with an edge, God's law of nature, government instituted to secure rights to life, liberty, and, instead of property per se, the pursuit of happiness. Powers of government derive slowly from the people's consent and the right to revolt. Politics and government are instrumentally valuable, only the added edge is the emphasis on rights in addition to individual property and interests. America will become the greatest land of rights talk, that is, we tend to conceive our political battles as battles about rights. Among the founders and as Washington Secretary of State, Jefferson was best known as a radical Republican. He supported active, decentralized self-government by independent farmers. The ratification fight separated him from Raymond Hamilton and John Adams. Whoever supported the new constitution was a Federalist, but there were different kinds of Federalists. Jefferson regarded himself as a Republican Federalist rather than a monarchical Federalist, as he called Hamilton, Hamilton and Adams. And Jefferson was a radical Republican, referring to Shays' Rebellion in Western Massachusetts in 1786, a revolt over taxation and debt collection. He wrote, God forbid we should be 20 years without such a rebellion. In famous, in famous letter to Madison in 1789, Jefferson further stated every constitution then and every law naturally expires at the end of 19 years. If it be enforced longer, it is an act of force and not of right. Alexander Hamilton Alexander Hamilton from 1755 to 1804 Washington's Secretary of Treasury was Jefferson's enemy. Hamilton was particularly concerned with America's economic progress in what he regarded as both a commercial and manufacturing age. He was the first to systematically argue that although Adam Smith's attack on protectionism was right in the long run, in the short run, it had too many disadvantages for an underdeveloped economy. Hamilton's report on manufacture, 1791, argued that an underpopulated agrarian society, such as the United States, could not compete with England and other Western European economies on manufacturing. Consequently, government must act to support domestic manufacturing, including building physically and financial infrastructure and establishing protectionists of tariffs. His view one the day after his death. Hamilton was responsible for a host of institutions that would protect the, and promote American industrial trade, including the Mint, the First National Bank of the United States, the U.S. Coast and Geodec Survey, the Army Corps of Engineers, and the Patent Office. Hamilton's aim was one great American system, an empire across the continent. For him, the Articles of Confederation left the United States a loose confederation of weak states. He already feared factionalism between North and South. He wrote of the danger of petty republics without any shared unifying purpose. Jefferson was not wrong in calling Hamilton a monarchical republican. Hamilton had argued that the perceived presidency should be a kind of elective monarchy. He feared the violent of one person, one vote by the equal voting rights of the states under the Articles. He also opposed the Bill of Rights and the first ten amendments to the Constitution, which were adopted by the Convention because of the insistence of anti-federalists. James Madison James Madison, 1751-1836, was the author of the famous concluding section of the Constitution and crafted the Bill of Rights. Along with Hamilton, he wrote the great majority of the Federalist Papers. Madison gave the most sophisticated analysis of what he regarded as the danger of democracy, factionalism. The Constitution must limit the power of local majority factions that would use government to serve their special interests. Because of this, Madison favored a republic, which he took to be the larger and representative, rather than the democracy, which must be direct and small, as in Rousseau. Madison followed Montesquieu's principle of the separation of power very similarly. 
There is no liberty if executive, judiciary, and the legislative are in the same hands. Popular self-rule is not enough. In practice, it means majority rule. Tyrannical rule by a majority is just as dangerous as rule by a tyrannical monarch, and factions can become can come to control the majority. All power, including power of the majority, must be limited by a constitutional structure that divides it among government institutions and pits them in competition. One of the major issues in forming the Constitution was the question of equity of political power in Congress among states differing populations. In the Federalist Papers, Madison described the compromise to address this question and the entire federated structure. As an advance in Republican design, he then used the difference between federal and state levels as further balance and limit on power. Thus, Madison showed that a larger country can be freer, more Republican, than a smaller, more democratic republic. Results of the Founders' Disputes The political system created by the Founders is a mixed bag, but in politics it can be good to recognize the necessity of balancing competing values, principles, and institutions. One of the questions for the founding generation was, which is the freer polity? A direct democracy that must empower majorities, or a republic with institutional structure to keep local majorities or factions from dominating government? At the same time, the founders were concerned with the realities of managing an economy that could survive in a North Atlantic world of powerful trading states. The result of the founders' dispute may have turned out well for the United States, but not in the short run for the principal antagonists. Jefferson, the Francophile, and Hamilton, the Anglophile, fought as Washington's secretaries of state and treasury, fearing the monarchical federalism of Hamilton. Jefferson and Madison formed the Democratic Republican Party to run against John Adams, who was the Federalist Party candidate in 1796. Adams won, with Jefferson serving as his vice president. During Adams' presidency, Jefferson was so disconnected that he helped draft a secession threat, threat, threat by the state of Kentucky. He was willing to destabilize the Union. Jefferson was elected president in 1801, with Adam Burr as his vice president. In 1804, while still in office, Burr shot and killed Hamilton in a duel. Jefferson dropped him from the ticket before his own re-election. Jefferson, the opponent of Hamilton's Imperial America from coast to coast, would up wound up making the largest single addition to any American empire, the Louisiana Purchase in 1803. He also passed the Embargo Act, a protectionist tariff, in 1807 against his apparent principles. Jefferson and Adams eventually reconciled and maintained a correspondence until death. They were a crucial component of the century of political brilliance from 1689 to 1789 that created modern republicanism. So guys, I hope you liked this video. Um, remember guys, hit like, subscribe, and come back and see any other videos in the uh, traditional channel. Thank you. Goodbye.